Good evening. What we are about to unfold is the life and world of the show. Ah, would you look at the time? August 22nd. Hey, glad you can make it. Welcome to All Would You Look at the Time. My name is Andrew. Okay, so here we are in the front yard of my childhood home in Connecticut. I moved to New York City two years ago, but since it's so close... I come back here pretty often, and I just found out my parents are selling the house soon. I'm going to take a lot of stuff out of there. Obviously, a lot of memories. Do you, at the end of the day, like when you're in bed or something, you like gather all your thoughts and relive all those important moments that happened that day in your head? I do that like every night, I guess whether I like it or not. Right over there, through that window, that was my bedroom, you know, where I would do that and inevitably relive everything that happened that day. And that's something I think about a lot, like how much of someone's life is spent thinking about the stuff they already did. At least in my case, like, it happens in the same spot. Maybe for you, it could be like in the shower thinking about stuff you did, thinking about your future, thinking about what you're doing that day, you know, or driving home from work or something. But yeah, for me, it's in the bed at the end of the day. And I guess that's what I would miss about this house is, you know, I'm never going to have those new memories in it, obviously. And the next people who live in that house, they don't know or I guess don't really care (laughs) about the stuff I did there. But I think this show is really that process. Really looking over the stuff that happened to you, the things you learned, the things that are going to happen, the experiences that have happened to you, you know, how much it affects you or will affect you. Like, this could be a pretty important moment right now. So I'm going to do that, but with friends and acquaintances and strangers, I guess. You can think of it as like a conversation you have with your friend at 2 a.m. outside of a party. You're like just talking about what's on your mind. There was a post I saw on Tumblr that was like, staying up late with other humans is such a weird thing. Like you get this special bond and like, what is this feeling? And that's what this is. I'd want it to be a late night talk show in the truest sense of the phrase ah would you look at the time flashback 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 stay at school come over here andrew what? let's take a picture of your your uh Okay, stand right there. Wait, stand still. Okay. Andrew Marino, first day of school, 1995. Kindergarten. Do something. Yeah, 
Hello. Here it comes, Andrew. Here's your bus. December 25th. Okay, we've got a great show tonight. I think. Well, so I'll admit I've been taking a long time to make this show happen. I've imagined it in my head so many times in so different ways, so many different ways. And once I settled on hosting myself, it was very hard to record myself, edit myself, mix myself, you know, my own voice. So it kind of made me want to procrastinate and put it off a little bit. Also work got in the way as well. Maybe that's an excuse, I don't know. At the same time, I'm going through all these videotapes of my childhood because I'm, you know, I'm packing up stuff for my old house, which is in Connecticut, and it's really making me think, like, wait, should I buy my childhood home and live there? Is this, is this the time, is this the time to do that? Like, is this show the start of, like, going back home and rethinking what I'm doing in New York City? Like, what is my future like? What, what is my future looking like? So I figured, what better person to have as my first guest than my friend Anna, who is going to read my fortune with some tarot cards. Okay, welcome Anna. Hi Andrew, Hi. thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So we've known each other for a few months. Mm -hmm. It came up that you can read tarot cards. Yeah, I love tarot cards. How did you get into that? Well, it kind of started off as a thing. My grandmother, my Welsh grandmother, I call her Mamgi, she's always kind of like used them in kind of like a religious kind of way. I know we always use them when like we're doing prayer or thinking of people that have passed on. And she's kind of into the occult. So ever since I can remember, she's had this exact same set of tarot cards, so it's kind of been passed down from her to me. And I have two other sisters, so it's a compliment. <laughs> do, oh, so they yeah. don't do it, but you do. They don't really do it, no. Yeah. They asked me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what would I possibly find out from this? Well, I mean, obviously there's different schools of thought, like oh, it, t it tells you their f your future and what it says is what's going to happen. I know people that will read their tarot cards every day because they're that uncertain. So one of the things is, like, tarot cards aren't certain because your future is constantly changing and everything's in flux and nothing's for certain. So what the cards say have to do with how you're thinking in the moment. And, like, you can always change the cards, but... It's kind of like an introspective experience, and you can say that has something to do with, you know, 
otherworldly powers, but some people just use it as a way to kind of look at their own lives. I'm kind of like mixed. I think like it is kind of creepy and things happen and you're like, I can't believe, I can't believe they said that. And other times I, I look and it's like telling me something I really don't want to know and maybe I don't even want to admit to myself or whoever's telling me, you know, reading my cards. So yeah. it's kind of like you got to accept it and then also like really think about it and don't get too scared because okay. the death card doesn't mean you're going to die. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. All right. So should we get into it? Yeah. So I'm just going to adjust myself a little bit. Ooh, my tea. Am I good here? Mm-hmm. All right. So first, before you start any deck, light, I like Palo Santo. Sage is a little So what are you stinky. doing right now? I'm lighting a, a little stick of Palo Santo. What is that? It's like a fragrant wood from South America. Mm-hmm. And you're kind of supposed to sage the cards or Palo Santo the cards, smoke them. Just kind of. Oh, it smells good. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like they use in a lot of perfumes. But sage can be kind of heavy. And also, if you have roommates, it could piss them off. So I consider Palo Santo a great alternative because sage can also smell like a bunch of grandmas. My grandma uses sage and like a feather. Feathers are the best way to to, um, cleanse. But I can't walk around with a feather in my purse. I mean, I could, but Palo Santo works. So once that's cleansed, I'm going to have you, Andrew. Okay. You're going to cut the deck three times okay. and shuffle it three times. All right. I'm really bad at shuffling. It doesn't matter. You can just kind of like mish the cards all over the table. You can yeah. – whatever you do is the right way because – Okay. So I'm not going to do it equal. Cards are in your hands. Parts. Okay. Here and then – okay. I'm going to shuffle – you're doing a great job Andrew I'm so bad you're so good no no, actually you're pretty good like he's poker level shuffler oh Oh, I dropped one it's it's good it's part of the process if you drop one just put it back do this bada boom I think this is good. Now I'll put in three equal parts. One. And then when you're two, done, I'm going to cut it and shuffle it again. Three. Okay. I laid three good. piles on the table. All right. Perfect. I'm going to put them all back together. I'm going to cut it three times myself. And then I'm going to shuffle them a couple times. Okay. So there's a few different ways that you can set up a deck. Um, I use the Rider Weight Tarot deck. It's kind of like the classic one. There's like a specific name for how I'm going to put out the cards, but okay. it doesn't matter. So one, two, So I have nine cards placed out. I have a row to the left. It's like three straight down with one across it. And then in the middle, I've got one. And then on the four, on the other side, there's four laid out. This is kind of about your immediate what's going on now. Okay. And this is about the future. So you're saying these three, with the one on top mm-hmm. is the today, is like now. Yeah, this of. is like the now. And then the four lined up is mm-hmm. the future. Okay. Exactly. And what's the one in the middle? This is kind of like what you're going to be able to do to get what you want here. The original set is kind of more present, future, relevant stuff. The other side is for more of a specific future idea okay. you might be having. But anything, anything's possible. Okay, so here is your current state. Okay, so it says judgment. And there's a person blowing a horn onto some people with their arms out. Rejoicing. Rejoicing, it looks like, yeah. All right, so there's a change of position or a change of, you know, 
an outcome. There's a renewal. Something's going on where things are changing. Okay. Just change. So I don't know how that relates to you. But so that's what's going on. Now, whatever's going on with this, you have some sort of obstacle to get there or with what's going on. So that's what this card is, Ace of Wands. And it's reversed. Okay. So when it's upside down to you, it's reversed. Ace of Wands. These are very okay. strong so, cards. So, yeah, you just flipped another card over, and it says Ace of Wands. It's a hand holding a wand, I guess. Which is like a big stick. <laughs> so you've got. Ace of Wands. So this is the meaning, or this is what it says, the description. A hand issuing from a cloud grasps a stout wand or club. So it's a wand. The reversed means that there's a fall. Well, this is what it says, verbatim. Fall, decadence, ruin, perdition, to perish, also clouded joy. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. With change comes a sort of, like... I'm happy, but this is going on, and this right. is hard. Clouded judgment, clouded view on the positive changes going on in your life. Okay. Oh, boy. So you just flipped over another card. There's a guy, like, laying down on, like, a like a, a coffin. Can I say a coffin? Yeah, it's a coffin. And he has his hands together. In a prayer. And, yeah, prayer hands, it looks like. Um, that doesn't look good. No, no, no. It's so that is what represents you. Okay. And kind of like the best you can arrive at in this situation currently doesn't mean it's going to happen. So right. this is four swords. Um it's facing you, so it means uh vigilance, retreat, solitude, exile, tomb, hermit's repose. So <laughs> I guess with what's going on it's like you're able to really like Focus your energies and focus yourself and, like, hide yourself away in order to, like, get to this point of change. And it might feel weird, but it's, like, yeah, it's part of what's going on. Okay. I don't know if this makes sense. You don't so have to tell me. But can, I, can I interpret it yet? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. So what I am interpreting it as kind of, like, thinking – I've been thinking about possibilities of what it would be like if I still lived in Connecticut. And about how, you know, my parents are selling their house oh. and the house I grew up in. Yeah. So I was thinking, what if I moved back there? I could buy this house. And I feel like if that was the case, it would be a lot to be like I'd be more yeah. in solitude, kind of more away from a lot of people and, you know, versus in the city. Well, let's see if that's even a good decision. And then so this wand – would be kind of like, and I, is this could this be like an un, maybe unsure? It's yeah, it's clouded. Like oh, this could be good, or like where you are right now is bad, and like it's just very cloudy, and there's yeah. change, and that's like definitely what would happen if you went to Connecticut. Okay. I know. Yeah, I'm from Connecticut. Yeah, this is a coincidence. Yeah, this yeah. is a coincidence. But yeah, we both love the nutmeg state. Yeah, or like we 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 like it. Oh, that's, yeah. Okay, so wow. what's next? You're flipping over another card on yeah. the today or the now side. Yep. What? So this is what you got. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to be getting some things. Something's going to happen, and this is what you can use to get to wherever you want to be. The fool. The fool. The fool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this idea. I, I made my hands sweaty when I heard about it. <laughs> The fool, the fool. It's, it's a cute card, though. It's beautiful. It's like yellow, and there's a small dog. Everything you really want. Mm -hmm. A flower, package, the sun. You're on your way out, but it's reversed, so it's probably not the best. Reversed means disruption, carelessness, nullity, uh, negligence. So it's kind of like if you decide to... You've got. Do you think maybe maybe like more of the reason I'm doing this, more the reason I'm thinking about this, maybe a foolish reason, or like the like it might be a good thing to do, but the reasons behind it might be foolish. Yeah, the reasons behind it kind of go with what your strengths are, which is able to like really focus on what you love and like yourself, but in that way isolating yourself and like 
digging yourself into a hole of isolation. Mm -hmm. And I know Connecticut, especially if, like, you're in a beautiful rural area, like, it's nice, but it might be, like, going not for what you're working for towards. Who knows? But that's the cards. It kind of makes you think, like, maybe you're not really thinking about it clearly. You're thinking about it more um, in, like, nostalgia. You're, You're... nostalgic for that kind of stuff i understand yeah i have divorced parents i'm always scared about that stuff one of the reasons why i never read my tarot cards (laughs) (laughs) and i never want anyone to read mine it's okay i don't like it oh she's i don't want to know recommendation from someone who's reading my tarot cards (laughs) i don't know it's scary you can handle the truth i don't know all right so this is what's going on this is what's before you this is the middle card this correlates with the previous four cards okay this is what's before you. This is what to come. This is like what's going to happen with all this. Okay. 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 Ooh. So there's no real text on it. There's a number. There's like a Roman numeral three at the top. There's three people on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's three of cups. Okay. They're holding cups. It looks like, I guess. Yep. They're cheersing and beneath them is pumpkins and fruit and it's plentiful. And so you know that everything looks pretty good, but you never know. So we've got three of cups. And it's reversed, so that means it's facing me upside down to Andrew. And it's, uh, oh, expedition, dispatch, achievement, and end. Mm -hmm. So if you make the right decision, you could be kind of going on a new adventure. Yeah. It's going to be either, you know, that house or either you let go of that and it gives you more ability to... I don't know. Do something yeah, else. I mean, this. I, I think like one another reason I'd be doing doing that. You know, I want to focus more on stuff I want to do, like mm-hmm. recreationally, and definitely the show is is part of it. So I want to be able to do it in New York, and I want to be able, to, or I would like to be able to do it in Connecticut. But like having more free time is is a reason to move to Connecticut. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. There's no free time here. Right. There's nothing, and that's like with the fool. It's like. To be a fool is, like, also pretty, like, ballsy yeah. because you're taking a chance. You're taking a risk. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's how I got here, I think. So that could be it. Maybe. You yeah. know, that's why the cards, they literally, I can see it. It's just, like, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking about your life and, like, you didn't realize, like, how big this could be. Right. And imagine. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I think yeah. My my goal, my achievement would be the, just making the show and and it, keep going with it. And it, it means like success. I mean, this is saying you'd be you'll be good at whatever you're gonna whatever you choose. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be successful, but you know, doesn't mean you're gonna be happy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's good to, okay, that's good to know too. I'm a realist. All right, so. This is like what I said before. This row of four unturned cards are kind of a more specific reading. Mm -hmm. So if you had something in your mind, even if you could, it seems like we're kind of on the topic of like where you're going to end up. So I feel like we should stay here. Okay. What do you mean? I mean like with what what you're thinking right now. Unless there's something else you want to think about, then you can think about that for this. If you've gotten enough from here. But um, you don't have to tell me until the end. Okay. Don't tell me till okay, the end. Okay, yeah. All right. It's more fun that way. It's more fun. It's like a slumber potty. All right. So this is your first card. Okay. And this is you, how you feel towards things, like your attitude, your emotions towards what's going on. Oh. Okay. What do Five we of have Pentacles. Here? It's pretty intense. This is how you're feeling. So what? Do we, what is on that card? So there's a, a woman in a shroud. And a man with uh, two crutches and a bum foot, and they're walking in the snow beneath a stained glass window. And in the stained glass window, we have five pentacles, five yellow stars. Gotcha. So it's like they're outside a church or something. Or So we've got the five of pentacles. So it's uh, chaos, discord, ruin, how you're feeling about this. Hmm. Okay, you flipped over another card. Page of Swords, and it's facing me. Mm. So this is your environment, the influences of people around you, like what you have to support you. So even though you're feeling this way, you've got this support, and it's Page of Swords. And there's a figure 
holding a sword upright in both hands amongst the clouds, and he's kind of sitting on top of a grassy knoll, Mm -hmm. standing on a grassy knoll. Um, So it means authority, overseeing, vigilance, examination, kind of stuff like that. Like you've got a lot of like strong people around you, Mm -hmm. but also you need to be like cautious and like there's a lot of people watching your movements and like what's going on. So I don't know what that might have to do with. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, next one is King of Cups. So it's another, another, yeah, it's a guy holding those, those similar cups is the middle card. So this card is your hopes and fears, what you want, what you're scared of. The reverse and the front meaning, the regular meaning can also be like used with this Mm -hmm. because it covers both of the the fear and the hope. So he's holding kind of a, a cup in one hand and he's got like almost like a, what it's called, a scepter a really short little scepter in his other hand, and he's sitting on top of a big gray throne, and there's water beneath him. And there's a ship in the background with some sort of fish as well. And a lot of times, if you don't want to use actual, like, written interpretation, a lot of the pictures can be really cool to, like, kind of research and think about, like, the meanings for those, like, little things. Mm -hmm. All right, so a fair man, a man of business, law or divinity, responsible, disposed to oblige um, the querent, like the person that's talking to you. Art and science are combined, including those who profess science, law, art, creative intelligence. So that's kind of like your hopes of like basically like the art and like creating everything together Mm -hmm. and like you're a man. It's like you're this guy (laughs) that's gonna, that also divinity, like you're like you're special, like you have like a really like good soul. So like the art is really important to you. And like to be able to make that into a business and like create a living and a home and like your own life. Like make it all happen. The dream. I think there's a talking head song. God damn it, what is it called? Uh he's like, and you go home to your wife and you're like, That's uh, yeah. not my wife and once like, a, once in a lifetime. Yes. Yeah. That's like that. Yeah. Oh, I just got the chills. <laughs> Unless your song, Andrew. Okay. And then your fears. Okay. Same thing with, you know, double dealing, injustice, like scandal, just like anything that could go wrong with like you and whatever you're doing. Right. So, so all these I, so far I've interpreted as if the show takes, takes over more of what I want to do, um, there will be some listeners here. The Page of Swords could be like the listeners following people. Mm-hmm. Who, listen, who are listening or what you interpret as watching, right? And so this this one back here, the mm-hmm. more negative one, could be something like, you know, just the, the negative aspects of that, of having kind of, you know, the more attention you get, the more the more haters, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. It's the more attention you get, the more you have to watch out. And that's why the Page of Swords is also like, if you see him, he's holding his sword, he's ready. He's in like a stance of like, yeah. about to like knock down somebody if they're about to like, you know, mess yeah. with him. Right. So it's also like keeping your guard up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is maybe something that you haven't done in the past before. Or maybe not. I don't know. You never know. It comes in the weirdest places, these things. Yeah. And then it's the King of Cups like. is kind of maybe my ideal situation. Yeah, it's your hopes and fears. Yeah. It's literally, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I got it so far, Ideal situation, worst situation. Yeah. Okay, so we have one card left that's not turned over. Yeah. All right. This is what will come. Okay. So this what? Okay. So this and this involve this involves like your memories, your experience, like everything that's happened now. Okay. Up until this minute. It's like I said everything changes, so don't don't get worried. Oh, okay. it looks nice. So it's a uh, Roman numeral 9, correct? Yes. And there's a person holding with a bird on its hand and it's a it's nice flower. It's a falcon. A falcon, okay. Because you got the glove. Oh, right. Yeah. So you know it's a bird of prey. Oh, okay. And it's amongst a bunch of grapevines and it looks pretty pr- plentiful and she's wearing like royal robes. You got a lot of pentacles. Yeah, I noticed sense. that. What, why why well, does that Well, it's make like sense? a lot of like 
And this is also like, who knows if this is what just my grandma said, Mm -hmm. but you know, like people with like darker hair and darker eyes, (laughs) like they get pentacles. I don't know. (laughs) What? I don't know. That's just what she said. Oh, dang. So who knows if that's true? So we've got a nine of pentacles. Prudence, safety, success, accomplishment, certitude, discernment. And then the things that you're going to have to worry about is deception and avoided project and bad faith. So those are the things you're going to have to fight against Uh if you want to get literally like everything you want. Okay. Because the description is about abundance. Yeah. So it's abundant, but it's reversed. So you have to watch out for voided projects and like weird things that might be going on that might distract you from what you're trying to do. Right. That's what I'm thinking. I think yeah, I mean, something's like someone's going to try to pull some shit. What if it's my own s- self? Yeah, that's a thing too. Because, it's always me. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is something I'm doing for myself. I have no other people helping me or working on it. So I don't really have any deadlines. No one's telling me when I should finish this. Finish and, it by my birthday. And that should <laughs> and that's like a <laughs> and that's a problem for me. So you know, I have no incentive to finish this besides well, my own, you know, achievement. But yeah, that's why this stuff is great because it's the things that you don't want to tell yourself. It's the things that like maybe you've been thinking about, but like you know, you know you could be successful at it, really successful if you don't listen to yourself. Your bad self. Yeah. Your self that's like, ah, eh, this could wait. Because just seeing the word voided project in the description was like, I was like, eh. Right. So this kind of. That's like your home. So my home. Yeah. So on the side, uh, the other side that we first turned over mm-hmm. is my, maybe it's just my comfortability. You know, I'm so comfortable I'm in my apartment. I go home, I can watch TV. I don't have to work on on this show if I don't Mm -hmm. want to. And in the middle is really like my skills and my creative output. And on all the way to the other side is, um, you know, what all this could happen, what could happen if I actually apply myself to this. Yeah, and it's a really great progression of like, you know, uncertainty, kind of feeling like shit, like, is this actually going to happen? And like what you need to do to work at this, like... You got to believe in yourself and you got to watch out for things, people, whatever else that will distract you from your main goal, King of Cups, and this with your abundance of success and plenty of podcasts. Mm -hmm. And you just have to like not isolate yourself in the wrong way, isolate yourself in the right way. Yeah. And stay motivated. And I think you could be really successful. Well, thank you, Anna. This was, I think this was pretty informative. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. I had fun. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime you're uncertain. Great. Thanks. I'm going to Madam Anna. Consult you. <laughs> consult you. So that went pretty well, but I have to admit I didn't finish this episode by Anna's birthday. Her birthday was in the beginning of March. We recorded that on February 27th, but that did push me a little harder at meeting a deadline for this show. I didn't want to waste her time and not have that reading mean anything. So I realized that a good way to pressure myself into finishing this episode would be feeling the pressure from other people (laughs) to not uh, waste their time, which is good. That's good. You know, I don't want to waste anyone's time. I feel bad about that. So to add to that pressure, I added a second guest who I was very excited to meet. Her name is Kelly Caravallis, who I know about through Instagram. She has a really funny personal Instagram account called Business Casual Dreams. And she just came out with a book called Adult Gummies. So without further ado, here's that interview. All right. I'm here with Kelly Caravallis. 
author of Adult Gummies and a great Instagram account, Business Casual Dreams. Yes. <laughs> so let's just talk a little bit about the book. Tell us about it. Okay. The book is called Adult Gummies. It focuses on the lives of four different millennials that work in an office together, but it's a novella, so it's only like 90 pages, so it's pretty brief. You get like de- certain details of their characteristics, but you know, nothing gets too deep. But um, the main character, Jen, is like, quote unquote, trying to break the glass ceiling, whatever that means. And uh, she is trying to get a promotion because she wants to be a content creator. So there's a lot in the book with themes about content and, like, social media and just, like, content as, like, a uh, commodity kind of could mean. And so she's the main character, and the other characters are Thad, who's just, like, a normal, totally normal dude, and then Kat, who is, like, the hipster who has her first office job. (laughs) And then Dirk is, like, the, the... Guy everybody's supposed to hate, but can still have a soft spot. Yeah. um, (laughs) The characters are very relatable. Yeah. uh, And also, like, their kind of reactions to situations are very relatable. Yeah. Was that kind of the intention? Like, you wanted people to see themselves in this? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I also didn't want to base any of them off, like, a single person in real life. Although Dirk is, like, pretty based off of one person that I worked with. (laughs) So you, <laughs> so you work, you work in an office. Yeah, I work in an office now. It's um, like a mental health center in rural Pennsylvania. So it's not really the office that I based off of the office in the book. The office in the book is more my office job when I lived in Philadelphia and I worked at um, a place called Binder and Binder. If you've ever heard of that, they used to have, like, bus ads and TV ads. And oh, like, wait. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's like social security disability law firm. So the office life is not usually, like, a creative environment. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, like, most of your work is, like, a response to that being, like, a need to be creative. Yeah. In, like, a place that's not that creative. Yes, yeah. definitely. So does that make creating easier or harder in that environment? I would say, depending on your workload, like at the actual job, you know, if you're really busy, you don't really have time to like daydream and like really think about like the space that you're in and like, you know, the person that you are outside of that space. But I had plenty of downtime at that job. So really was a good way for me to think creatively in a way because it was just so blank and everything was so drab around me and I wanted to feel like I wasn't part of that environment like you know what I mean (laughs) yeah I like in your in your book you talk about like the characters are getting like they think about like what tissue box to (laughs) to like represent themselves to like add something creative or original to their to their work area yes yeah I was thinking like in retrospect a time when I was very creative was when I was working a nine to five job and yeah. not doing anything creative during that time. Oh, cool. Uh, so, like, when I would go home, I would like draw doodles and make music and make short videos or something like yeah. that. Um, but now I have a, a creative job where I'm like editing podcasts and producing stuff and helping uh, work on videos and stuff. Um, so, I didn't have for a while that like inherent need to be creative outside of work. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But now I'm at a point where I'm like, <laughs> everything, the only like interesting things I'm doing is just from my job. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, when I go home, I'm not doing anything yeah. creative. That's um, interesting. And now, so that's what like this show is, is what I'm doing with, uh, with that. Yeah. That's something that I definitely want, tried to explore in the book too, is like having like an office job that is kind of like a creative office job that you can, like, use your creative skills in some way. And, uh, you know, like, being a content creator as, like, the character Jan wants to be. And then there's also the part of me where I'm like, well, I just don't want to be in this 9-to-5 life at all anyway. Yeah. Like, I still want to chase some kind of bohemian dream or something, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> like, isn't the goal to, like, have art be your job? Yeah. But, like, I'm doing that. And I'm feeling, like, <laughs> restricted because, yeah. I don't know, it's weird because, um, you know, the saying is, like, you do what you want. You work 
You never work yeah. a day in your life if you if you, you know. do what you love. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, but also you still have to somehow figure out how you can get health insurance at that job. <laughs> right, <and> right. Four hundred one k. So would you prefer to just have your art as your job? Because I feel like a lot of your stuff is based off of like your office job and your Instagram account. Those yeah. memes you make are like <laughs> you probably wouldn't be making those kind of yeah. things, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. Because it's just a day to day part of my life, and yeah. so for social media, you know, you just like want to update it about your day to day life. So yeah, working at that boring job that I'm working at now, like, was perfect creative fodder. Because I'm in a room by myself there, and uh, uh, the woman who shares the room with me doesn't work about half the hours that I work. And it's also a part-time job, so gotcha. it's yeah. not 9 to 5 life like the old job. But I'm in a windowless room by myself most of the time, <laughs> so it's really easy to just, I don't know, fuck around in there and, mm -hmm. and take goofy pictures and and make um memes or make videos and just no, no like i won't interact with anybody all day like yeah <laughs> so just feel so alone <laughs> uh, are you so like do you feel like if you didn't have those jobs and let's say you uh i just went full-time like i'm gonna start just writing and making art whatever that may be but you don't have those influences anymore yeah yeah that's definitely that's something that i think about because if I were to, like, someday not have to work, like, a job and make my creative thing, like, my full-time thing, like, I wonder, like, where a lot of the inspiration would come from. Because I feel like you still have to live, like, a fairly normal life to be able to, like, make art about stuff, you know? I mean, I guess people can make art and be, like, totally detached from reality. Yeah. But I, I kind of like reality grounding everything in there yeah like a lot of your stuff is so uh i think reason why a lot of people like it is because it's so relatable like yeah. that's what a lot of memes are mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um and people are like yeah that's uh, <laughs> like i mean that's what jerry seinfeld's whole like career was right like, what's up with exactly. that exactly um, let's talk about some of those night themed Okay. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. Okay. So, um, pretty much the entirety of chapter three takes place at night. It's a Thursday night, so it's Thirsty Thursday. Right. <laughs> Familiar with those days. So I feel like Thursday night is as m much of its own kind of iconic thing as like Saturday night. You know, because mm -hmm. it's like a night that people go out, or like for me personally, like it's a night to go out sometimes and like kind of get wild without even realizing it or like not <laughs> expecting it you know it's a work week it's a work night but you're so close to friday like you know you might stay out late and talk to some weird people at a bar or something so i think there is some kind of mysticism around thirsty thursday as much as yeah. tgif and uh saturday night so it's thirsty thursday they go to a karaoke bar for um, their co-worker's sending off party because he's going on paternity leave. And he's the token Gen X character, while all the main characters are millennials. And then there's a couple token baby boomers in the book. So he sings Smashing Pumpkins, but with butterfly wings uh, yeah. <laughs> for yeah, his karaoke I, song. When I was reading that, <laughs> uh, it's funny just because, like, my band used to play that song oh, all the time. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> what, what did you sing? No. <laughs> I play guitar. We were in, like, a classic rock cover band, cool. and that was, like, the only, like, stuff from the <laughs> 90s that we played. Yeah. <laughs> Because we were just awesome. Smashing Pumpkins fans. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a good song. And, but also, like, there's so many memes, like, using that format. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, totally. But, yeah, so he sings this song. It's his karaoke song. And, uh, you know, he kind of gets really into it. And, like, the character Cat is watching him and kind of trying to figure him out. He looks, like, pained, like, trying to sing it. And I was kind of just thinking of that representing him like about to be a father like thinking about his youth and maybe like because songs connect us so much to our youth and I think when you're working an office job and I guess if you work there for a while I can't say because I'm not in my late 30s or whatever or 40s but uh seems like it would really like grind on you so that's just supposed to reflect I don't know people kind of like romanticizing their teenage years when they're stuck in something for a long time. So I don't know, go, like going out to a bar at night with your coworkers at your office job is just like a very different experience than going out with your friends. Oh, totally. yeah, yeah, like 
you know these people really well because you spend so much time with them, but you don't really know them at all because you just know them within work context. So most of your conversations are about work, probably. And um, maybe you know little bits and pieces about them from, like, pictures they have on their desk or their tissue box or, you know, whatever <laughs> little smidgens of individuality they have displayed there. But, yeah, it's totally different than going out with your friends. So I think stuff has the potential to get, like, really ugly in, like, a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, like you were saying, especially on a Thursday night where it's like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're just so close to the end of the week and like, you know, I need to let off some stress. So like going out to a happy hour with my coworkers at my job at Binder and Binder, you know, there was a core group of millennials there, about like five of us. And so, yeah, when we went out to happy hour, like people got drunk and like, you know, started getting emotional, like could <laughs> start gossiping like crazy and just oh like God. bringing like their real life problems in there, the picture, you're just like, damn, like, I didn't know you had this shit going on. Even if it's, I don't know, it's just like, yeah, too much oh information. God. Whenever, <laughs> whenever I go out with my coworkers, it's like, what else are we complaining about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just get so amped from complaining, you know, you can just like freely complain in this space outside of work, but, uh, Stuff can get ugly. Yeah, and, like, <laughs> you can go home and talk to, like, your significant other or, yeah. like, a, a family member about it, but they don't know it as well as you do. Right, so, exactly. Like, talking it with a coworker, you're like, oh, my God, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I know, right? Like, you can, you know, tell your partner when you get home every single night about work, but they still, like, have no idea because they've never been there. Right, It's yeah. It's interesting how, like, such a big chunk of people's lives can be cut off away from you know, their partner or their families or friends or whatever. So happy hour can get ugly. So <laughs> so with this happy hour, it's kind of implied that Jeff is kind of having an emotional moment. And, um, you know, he's getting this baby send off and he's getting these really shitty gifts from people yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. like he can't use. And uh, that's like the, about the baby boomers because they're just like supposed to be really clueless so they gave him like really stupid gifts oh yeah um it was like a minions <laughs> a minions baby uh, hat yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a minions a self-knitted minions baby hat because earlier in the book the boss her office is described as having all this minion paraphernalia right. then the other old baby boomer guy like just gives him like a snow baby's snow globe <laughs> it's just like very grandma and totally useless. You it was know? Like, I know. It was so it was <laughs> so perfect to describe that kind of uh, relationship between coworkers. Yeah, that took me a while. Like I, ha- I was like, these gifts have to be on point. Like oh, I really? really need to think about what these gifts are going to be because it's going to like say a lot about the characters. <laughs> so I have like a couple pages in my journal of like minions hat, like you know, baby onesie. That like a whole list of like things. That could have been them. Right. And I, I was stuck with those. So then, well, then the Jen character does her turn. She sings karaoke. And it's interesting trying to write, like, a scene in a book about karaoke because I love karaoke and yeah. I love watching people do karaoke. But it's kind of like, what do you write about, you know? Like, you can, like, literally write out what they're singing, but you don't want to get too cheesy with that or anything. So I just kind of wrote about, like, through Cat's head, like what I would think about if I were drunk at a bar watching my coworkers sing karaoke. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> just kind of like space out and go on <laughs> tangents and somehow make it about 9 11. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is next for you? Oh, next for, next for me? Yeah. Well, I'm in New York right now for a week because I'm trying to start writing my next book, which is takes place in New York. Um, and it's based off of when I was 20. 324 living in New York and I was working at a foot fetish place as the secretary. So That's crazy. It's like kind of going to be another book based around a job, but then on lots of other things too. I don't have quite as much of like a pinpointed plot figured out yet, like adult gummies like it might be different plot-wise. Like, I like books with plots, don't get me wrong. <laughs> who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, who doesn't like plots. But I also kind of like non-plots or like very vague plots. But I don't like the complete lack of a plot. So I don't know totally, like, what direction I want to take it. Like, I've just started writing it. 
um, like today. Well, I'm basing it off of, I wrote a short story like at the time when I was working there in 2014 about it. So I'm going to like expand on that short story. Cool. All right. Kelly, thank you so much for doing thank this Thank you, Andrew. It was a pleasure. Cool. And where can we get the book? Adult Gummies you can get on Amazon. Just look it up on Amazon. My new book will probably also be on Amazon. I have no idea. But if you keep up with me on Instagram, you can uh, get updates. Cool. Can't <laughs> wait. I really enjoyed talking to Kelly. It really made me realize how much influence space and time has on a lot of art. I think I assumed what Anna and the cards were telling me was that I was being very nostalgic and not evolving as a person if I had moved back home. But after talking to Kelly and letting both of those conversations stir in my head for a bit, I realized I'm going to be making some time to be creative and fill that void wherever I am, really. Maybe I'll be doing it more in Connecticut, where I don't get lazy and exhausted, but I'm in New York City right now, and I'm almost done with this episode. So I think really what the cards told me, and you probably realized this before I did, was that Either path I take, whether it's staying in the city or moving elsewhere, both will really work out if I focus and work hard for the, for the things I want. Which I guess might be obvious, but maybe I wasn't really trying hard enough. So I don't really know where I will end up for now, but I think it's getting easier to work on the projects I want. So let's see where this show takes me. Oh, would you look at the time? I've got to go, so let's close out the show with my musical guest. Also, 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 they'll be on tour this summer throughout Canada and are releasing an album this fall. So you can check them out there and also on Bandcamp at also, also, also dot bandcamp dot com. I'm not sure why I can't say also <laughs> very well, but... Here is a exclusive unreleased track f- called Nobody Loves You. Take it away.
Come back. 